Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2017 BMW X5, we're going to be showing you how to install the eTrailer.com 7-way upgrade kit. But before we get into that, uh, let's take a minute, check this out, and make sure it'll work for you. So what this kit is going to do is give us a 7-way round style connector, and it's also going to have a 4-way flat on it too so that's pretty cool you know regardless of what trailer you got if it has a seven or four you'll be able to hook right up to it you won't have to bother with an adapter or anything um, but what this kit is really designed for is for a wireless type brake controller to be used all right because this is just going to give us our lighting signals so our brakes taillights turn signals but also a 12 volt auxiliary power um, and that's really popular for this style of brake controller. Okay, this is a Kurt Echo. That's all it needs. It doesn't need the other wires ran uh, like a traditional style brake controller would. Um, there's a few more inputs you'd have to get it. Um, if that's what you're looking for, if that's what you're trying to do, say put a red arc or, or some type of regular style brake controller on the dashboard, then the other kit, the universal brake controller install kit would be more appropriate. But you got a wireless one, uh, you know, this will plug in, give it the power and signals it needs, and be able to apply the brakes on your trailer. Uh, with that said, too, you know, there's other purposes for this. So let's say maybe you have uh, a pop-up camper or something, and it doesn't have trailer brakes on it, but it might have a battery on it to operate the, the pop-outs and things like that. Um, what this could do, as long as the camper is wired up properly, is this could actually trickle charge or maintain that battery on the camper whenever you're towing it. That way it's ready to rock and roll when you get there. So uh, that's another reason that you could use something like this. I do want to mention in order to use this though, you are going to need existing four-way flat type wiring because this is going to plug into that and get some signals from it. Um, on our vehicle today, we use the Kirk Universal Kit um, worked out really well, so you could always go with that. Or if you happen to have factory, maybe BMW wiring. As long as that four-way flat's functional, you know, you'll be in pretty good shape. Aside from that, though, there, there's really not a whole lot to this. You know, it's going to convert that existing four-way into the seven-way and give you that 12-volt power. So if you got a wireless brake controller or you're trying to charge a battery, this is going to be a great solution for you. As far as the installation goes, it's not terrible on this car. Um, not a ton of space to work, but thankfully the batteries in the back, everything's kind of located in, in one area. And so you don't have to route wires all over the place and stuff like that. So uh, hopefully what we do here today can give you some ideas and some direction and make it a little bit easier on you. But why don't we go ahead and get started on it now. To begin our installation, the very first thing that we're going to do is grab our seven-way connector end here and just kind of prep it. Uh, easier to do this off the car instead of underneath it. So on the back side of it here, you're going to have several wires coming off of it. The white one will be a ground. The black one will be our power wire. The yellow and blue, uh, that's for reverse light and electric uh, brake output, and we're not going to be using those uh, for our situation as majority of you out there won't be either. So I just folded them over, taped them up, the yellow and blue wire. The black one, so these are going to have pre-attached butt connectors on them, which work fine. I like to upgrade though to a heat shrink style because it ends seal up and just help protect against corrosion a little bit better. And so when you make connections, whether it be a butt connector or a ring terminal, whatever you're putting on there, you can strip the end of the insulation back Give that wire a good twist, put the butt connector over it, and crimp it down. At this point we can mount up our bracket, and on the bottom of our fascia here there's a support bracket with an 8mm head screw. I pull that screw out and just put a couple of small washers on it, and I'm just going to use this to mount up our bracket. I think it'll work pretty good and be more than enough in terms of uh, being secure. Now we can bolt up our connector. So you'll slide 
all the wires through. Push it into place, and then on each corner, first you'll take this four way and slide that into place there. And then each corner you can take a screw, push that through. Then on the back side of it, you can put on a flat washer, a split lock washer, and a nut. So I'll get this one started and then use that same hardware for the three remaining corners. So I got our screws tightened down, um, and now what you can do is take this four-way flat, and that's going to plug into our existing four-way flat wiring. What I like to do is just use some dielectric grease on the terminals. That'll help prevent corrosion and stuff in the future. And this is just going to plug directly in. What I've done is just made this a semi-permanent connection. Once I had these four ways plugged in, I wrapped it in some electrical tape and then just put a zip tie around it, uh, just so it doesn't you know, accidentally come down over time. So what I've done now is that white wire with the pre-attached ring terminal, that is a ground. And so there's a metal flange that kind of runs through here because you don't have a ton of great spots to do this. But this metal flange worked out pretty well. Um, you know, I cleaned it off real good to get it to bare metal and then just used a self-tapping screw to secure the ring terminal to it. Now with that done, we can go up top and try to locate a spot where we can drop our power wire down. That way we can hook it up to the one coming out of our seven way here. If you open up the hatch on the driver's side, there's a, a, usually a panel here. You can pop that out. It just pulls away. but kind of buried way down in the corner, there's going to be a grommet. And ours was already drilled because you have this four-way wiring drop down there. Um, so that's what we're going to use to, to route our power wire uh, down from inside the vehicle out. If you're, you know, if, if you need a, to use that grommet, it's fine. If it's not already drilled out, just take a small bit, drill down through there, um, and we can push push our wiring through. And I'll probably just run maybe four or five foot through uh, and then leave the rest up top here. Back underneath the vehicle, our power wire is going to drop down kind of from that corner there and route over through here. And there's a lot going on under here. Do your best to avoid any hot parts, especially nothing really moving back here, but um, you know, do the best you can. And here in a minute, once I hook this up, we'll clean all this up and get it secured. But with that said, so our power wire is going to get hooked up to the other end of our butt connector. Do that the same way. And since I'm using a heat shrink style connector, come back with my heat source and seal up the ends. So I came back with some zip ties, kind of tucked everything up out of the way, got it secured. Um, and with that all done, we can go back up top into our trunk area. You need to gain access to our battery. So if you open up your floor covering, the battery should be underneath this plastic compartment. And looks like it's held in place with a handful of these eight millimeter type screws. So a couple up here, maybe a few more over on the side, so we'll just work our way around and, and pull them off. Got the screws removed, and that's all that was holding it down, so we can lift up our compartment here and set it off to the side. So back in this compartment here, I took our circuit breaker and mounted that up. Um, just two self-tapping screws, run it down, and you're going to have two nuts on each post or on Two nuts total, one on each post. Remove those. And then what I did, that power wire that runs down to our seven way, I cut that to length and then crimped on a small ring terminal, just like how we did with the butt connector. And this is going to get placed 
over the silver colored post. So that'll slide on. I'll take the nut. Get that going. You want to tighten that nut down with a 3-8 socket and you don't have to crank down on these by any means. I usually just get it hand tight and then come back and you know, give it another bump or two for good measure. And then as far as a gold post, what you can do, uh, take, you know, you'll have some wire left over from where you cut it and since the battery's right here, I got maybe a couple foot. One end I crimped on small terminal other end a big terminal. Small one will go on our gold colored post there and we'll get that tightened down just like the other one. Our large ring terminal that's going to get connected to our positive battery terminal. So we have a 10 millimeter socket. You can remove nut. Alright, and then take the terminal, slide it over the post, and then just tighten it up back down. It is a good idea to test your wiring to make sure that it's working properly. Um, I'm using this tester as opposed to plugging into our trailer. That way, if our trailer has any issues, you know, that could potentially mislead us into thinking it's something we did on our vehicle side. But uh, with that said, we have our 12 volt auxiliary power back here. That's what's lit up now. We'll try our left turn, our right turn. We'll hit our brakes and try out our tail lights. Now that we know everything works properly, we can go ahead and put everything back together inside here. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the eTrailer.com RV 7-way upgrade kit on our 2017 BMW X5.